Australia, a land of breathtaking landscapes, a mosaic of untamed wilderness that has witnessed the passing of countless ages. Within these ancient realms, a mysterious legend has endured, whispered through generations and etched into the tapestry of Aboriginal folklore, the Yawi. A creature of mystery and myth, lurking in the shadows of the bush. It is said to be Australia's enigmatic cousin to the legendary Bigfoot, a creature that has eluded capture and understanding, leaving only whispers in its wake. But the Yawi is more than a cryptid, it's a symbol deeply embedded in the cultural fabric of this vast land. Its presence is not just in the footprints it leaves, but in the echoes of stories, the rustle of leaves, and the flickering shadows that dance in the moonlight. But what exactly is a Yawi? To some it's more than a creature. It's a living embodiment of the mysteries that linger in the heart of the Australian bush. In Aboriginal folklore, the Yawi is a primal force, a guardian of the land, a spirit woven into the very fabric of their storytelling. Descriptions vary but common threads emerge, a towering presence covered in hair and possessing an otherworldly intelligence. These ancient depictions tell tales of a creature that walks the line between the seen and the unseen, a spectral figure that eludes easy classification. The Yawi, from a cryptozoological perspective, is often likened to the legendary Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Reports speak of a large, ape-like creature standing bipedally and leaving behind distinctive footprints in its wake. What sets the Yawi apart is its cultural significance. It's not merely a cryptid, it's deeply embedded in the mythology of this land, resonating with the spirits and stories that have been passed down for centuries. In the rich tapestry of Australia's cultural history, the indigenous perspective on the Yawi emerges as a nuanced and deeply rooted narrative, intertwining the creature with the spiritual fabric of the land. For indigenous communities, the Yawi is not merely a cryptid, but a living presence, an ancestral guardian that traverses the ancient landscapes, embodying the connections between the people, the land, and the dream time. Aboriginal cave paintings, etched with precision on sacred rocks, depict the Yawi as a figure with distinctive features, a guardian with a profound connection to the spiritual realms. In ceremonies and dances, the Yawi is invoked as a symbol of unity, resilience and the enduring wisdom passed down through generations. The stories are not just cautionary tales, but a living testament to the profound connection between the indigenous peoples and the Australian landscape. The Aboriginal people talk about them as uh, being uh, an inhabitant of this land, but animals that are very secretive and, uh, and very rare and very rarely encountered. The Aboriginal people say we walked with them, they were our cousins. We didn't harm them and they didn't harm us. Uh, and they're not to be frightened of. 
uh, but they can be a bit frightening. But the fact that the Aboriginal people have names for these things is evidence that they knew about something that we don't know about. The heart of the Yawi mystery lies in the countless eyewitness encounters that have left indelible impressions on those who claim to have come face to face with this elusive creature. Eyewitness descriptions vary, but a common thread emerges, an immense bipedal figure covered in hair with piercing eyes that seem to penetrate the darkness. These encounters often occur in the most remote and untouched corners of the Australian wilderness. When the white settlers arrived in Australia in 1788, uh, the legends were already here amongst the Aborigines. The reports go right back to that date of white people actually seeing them. Since then, they've been seen all over the place, but there are sort of hot spots where more reports than usual come from, shall we say. There's a suburb of Sydney, the biggest city in Australia, called Yowie Bay because that's where, in those very early times, uh, was famous for its Yowie sightings. We were stargazing about 3 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning, the, the weather moved in and we couldn't see anything with the clouds and because my friends tell me I have a bad snoring problem so they made me sleep in the car. At about 3.30 in the morning I felt something brush up against my car and it was growling and, and I thought it was my friends playing a joke. So I kicked the window thinking it was them playing a game and then it was getting really loud and really quite a, a few roars and things of that nature and this thing just started rocking my car and shaking me from side to side and it was pitch black and uh, I couldn't see anything. I mean, I could, I could feel something against the car, I could hear it, I could feel the roof of the car the popping in. The whole thing only went for maybe a minute or two, but it felt like 10, 15 minutes. But my friends came out of the house with a high-powered spotlight, and that's when they saw the creature reaching over my car and shaking it from side to side. And then they, they called at it, and it roared back at them, and then it took off over the fence and it ran away. I got out of the car, I had a busted shoulder, I had a busted eye. The roof of my car was dented in uh, from elbows, pushing down as it reached over the car. And, you know, it had to be eight foot tall, you know, seven, eight hundred pounds or three, four hundred kilos and it was wrapped over my car and it wasn't happy. So I started six years ago really in investigating uh, reports at first and then we developed a theory and we started trying to prove that theory and then we got a lot of results and then we got more results. So this is continuation along that theory and building networks with scientists and educational institutions in order to help us validate any evidence we get. You know, we think we're getting close, slowly but surely, we're getting close. About six months ago, my son and nephew, we went for a drive out to a um, section of track and it was a dead end onto a little creek. There was a gully down beside me, just led into thick scrub. I could hear something moving through the gully as I was walking back to the car. We were in the middle of nowhere, nobody was down there. You could hear this thing plain as day walking like parallel with me as I was walking back. This thing was that was walking. So then I waved to my son to come a bit closer and as he was coming closer we could hear rocks banging together down in this gully. Something was bashing rocks together. It was just bang, bang. And there was birds further down the track just going ballistic. I've never heard anything like it in my life. Jumped in the car and hightailed out. Yeah, chickens. I've seen enough evidence to know that it's not human activity that's out there. And one night, something began beating upon the, uh, the ranger's quarters, which is just a small cabin in the rainforest, then went under the uh, house and threw all our tools out onto the lawn. And this was in pitch blackness, and this powerful series of roars came out of the forest, unlike anything I'd ever heard before. Like, yee, 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 yee. Booming call, and we wondered what on earth could do that. 
There was no animals that did that. Shortly afterwards, I think it was, that the head ranger came face to face with one. He was cutting through a fallen tree that had fallen across the walking track and came face to face with an animal unlike anything that anyone had ever seen before. He went into virtual shock and they said it had a shiny black face, had a crested head like a sagittal crest. It was just like a gorilla to him. But he said it wasn't a gorilla, you can see it was a bit different. It was more bipedal. And that's the first time we had an idea of what this animal might look like. Because I was a natural skeptic, like how could this animal exist without us knowing about it? You know, after 200 years of European settlement, and, but we've only got reports. That's the situation. The Yowie. Cryptozoologists and researchers meticulously document the aftermath of these encounters, collecting plaster casts of enormous footprints and analyzing the surrounding environment for signs of the Yawi's presence. These footprints are unlike anything belonging to known wildlife in the region. They suggest a creature of considerable size and weight, challenging our conventional understanding of the natural inhabitants of the Australian bush. The tales of eyewitnesses weave a complex narrative, leaving us to ponder the nature of these encounters, whether they are fleeting glimpses of an ancient guardian or the product of an overactive imagination. In the pursuit of the Yawi, a dedicated cadre of researchers has dedicated their lives to unravelling the mysteries that shroud this elusive creature. These intrepid individuals, armed with a blend of scientific rigour and a deep respect for Aboriginal wisdom, embark on expeditions into the heart of the Australian wilderness. Footprints, hair samples and scat, every piece of evidence is meticulously collected and analysed. Among the pioneers in the quest to demystify the Yawi is a name synonymous with dedication and perseverance, Rex Gilroy. For decades, Rex has been a stalwart figure in the realm of cryptozoology, tirelessly investigating the enigmatic footsteps of the Yawi across the vast expanses of the Australian wilderness. I never had a good education. I'd have never made it to university. I've had to teach myself. Ah, you've got to be here somewhere. I'm showing you UFO stuff, footprints. I've been doing this research into the Yawi for some 56 years now. In China, of course, they call them the Yaren there, the Almastis in Russia. In North America, the Bigfoot. And in New Zealand, they have the Moihau. But they all mean basically the same thing, wild man or wild hairy people or, or hairy people or hairy men, hairy women. Scientists said it was just a mythical creature like the bunyip. Of course, we've uh, gone out looking for these so-called myths and we found the evidence. My collection is priceless. I must be the only researcher in Australia who's got fossil human skulls under their dining room table. I have fossils from every geological period of the Earth's history and I now have the largest privately owned natural science collection in Australia. Yes. Over the years we have amassed a huge collection, so much so that we're virtually living in a pocket of our home and the rest of it's the collection, whether it be books or whether it's rocks and other artefacts and things like that. I'm so cramped for space lately. I'm at the stage where I've got to find room for them. With Rex's theories, I've always supported him and in actual fact, I'm probably his biggest um, sceptic because I'm mm. asked questions. How do you know that? And wh why do you think that's an artefact and that sort of thing? And he then explains it to me. Yes, Heather is very important to my research and my life generally. We're soul brothers, you can say. We're a team. Some people call us 
Mr. and Mrs. Yowie or Mr. and Mrs. Indiana Jones. I do have an Indiana Jones hat and uh, you know, I wear that whenever I'm in the bush. <laughs> Might as well dress the part. Throughout the world there's vast areas of land that man can't get into. In such regions, any animal unknown to science could quite easily survive without us knowing. The scientist had said to me once, it's impossible. Uh, that's a word found in the dictionary of fools as far as I'm concerned. But I need physical proof, I need tissue, I need a freshly dead corpse or, or hair samples or a, a skeleton, a skull, something physical that a biologist can work with and that's what I'm searching for. We have this hidden history, as I say, that will become accepted in years to come. And I'll be known as the, the pioneer of that, I guess. Rex Gilroy is being laughed at at the moment, but a hundred years from now, people will think more kindly of me, I hope. In 2021, Dean Harrison and his team, part of the Australian Yawi Researchers Organisation, captured a compelling piece of evidence that would send ripples through the cryptozoological community, a thermal video that thrust the elusive Yawi into the spotlight. Armed with state-of-the-art thermal imaging technology, the team ventured into the heart of Yawi territory. As the night unfolded, the thermal cameras scanned the landscape, registering the ambient heat of rocks, trees and wildlife. Then a distinct and anomalous heat signature emerged from the inky blackness, a figure that defied explanation. The thermal video captured by Dean Harrison and his team stands as a compelling piece of evidence in the ongoing quest to understand the Yawi. As we delve deeper into the shadows, this thermal revelation adds another layer to the enigma that haunts the Australian bush, leaving us to ponder the mysteries that linger in the heart of the unknown. Nestled in the heart of southeastern Queensland, Australia, the picturesque town of Kilcoy has found itself not only surrounded by breathtaking landscapes, but also at the epicenter of Yawi research, an unexpected hub for those seeking to unravel the mysteries concealed within the dense bushland. Kilcoy, with its quaint charm and friendly community, might seem an unlikely setting for Yawi enthusiasts to converge. Yet, it is precisely the town's proximity to rugged wilderness and reports of Yawi sightings that have drawn researchers, investigators and cryptozoologists to its doorstep. Kilcoy is a beautiful little country town with a lot of character that is going back maybe a hundred years. You know, it, the lifestyle there is still very visible and reminiscent of how it used to be when the early settlers came here. First settled in the middle of the 1800s, always been a grazing area, but also a very big timber industry in the early days. There were many sawmills here, hardwood sawmills. It's a small country town, about 2,000 people. Not much different in size than when I was a, a boy. But that hotel on your left, the Exchange, it's been there since probably the 1930s. Other than that, many of the shops have been here since the very early days of Kilcoy. You'll notice there's a fair bit of traffic here, and that's because it's also the main highway through Kilcoy. There is no bypass, so all the traffic going from the coast has to come down this main street. There were two young high school uh, kids camped in a creek out here, pig shooting. Only about uh, four kilometres from town here, quite close really, and they believed they heard and then saw a yowie. One of them took a shot at it. He doesn't know whether he hit it, but it took off. And then they claimed that 
they could hear it. They could hear the footsteps thumping around, thumping away, and then they heard them behind them. They reckon they could hear this, this yowie following them. They were scared, of course, and they ended up coming back to town in the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, yowie hunters from all over Australia descended on Kilcoy. It became big news. It was in all the magazines and papers and TV crews. So that's where the legend started. The local football team are the Yowies, and they play on the Yowie fields over here. That scares the opposition. <laughs> the town and the council and tourism rode on the, the legend of the Yowie, I guess. And where we're sitting now is Yowie Park. They hold the markets here every couple of weeks. Well, as you can see, people bring their wares along, uh, some of them homemade. Everything around the place. You can buy Yowie bread and Yowie burgers and Yowie, Yowie everything. Yowie Coffee was established back in 2005. It's a good good spot. I just wanted to get out of the hustle and bustle of Brisbane, you know, and uh, what better place than Kilcoy here in Queensland to, to do that. Kilcoy is the uh, is almost the capital of the Yowie country, I believe. Something that tourists are attracted to, you know. Some of them even come out here to uh, to look for the Yowie. And whether you whether you believe it or not, you know, it's um, it's a great story. In the age of headlines and digital frontiers, the enigmatic Yowie has captured the imagination not only of researchers and locals, but also of the media, amplifying the creature's presence in the public consciousness. From tabloids to mainstream news outlets, the media's fascination with the Yowie phenomenon has transcended the boundaries of traditional reporting. Headlines scream tales of encounters, eyewitness testimonies and expeditions into the Australian wilderness to uncover the truth behind this elusive cryptid. Television programs and talk shows have dedicated segments to Yowie sightings, often bringing together eyewitnesses, researchers and skeptics for lively discussions. As the economies of small country towns around Australia evolve, tourism is often cited as the next focus. Some places have reefs or rainforests, but in the foothills of the Sunshine Coast, they have the Yowie. Alleged sightings of the mythical creatures date back to the late 1800s. Worm your way where the fern fronds tall fashion a lacework over your head, hemming you in with a high green wall. Then, when the thrush calls once, stop dead. Ask the old grey wallaby there, him prick-eared by a woolly butt tree, how to encounter a glug. Australia's own C.J. Dennis may well have offered similar advice to those taking part in the current Queanbeyan quest for a Yowie. Few people are fortunate to be able to claim an encounter with Australia's answer to a Yeti or a Bigfoot. How should they approach a Yowie? Well, with any new creature, I approach it with, with some caution. Uh, though I personally haven't heard of any stories of people being hurt uh, by Yowies. Uh, or at least none that I can verify. The creature's elusive nature and the rich tapestry of folklore surrounding it provide a tantalizing narrative for viewers. As the Yahweh continues to navigate the intersection of folklore and modern intrigue, the media's fascination persists. In the realm of cryptozoology, where the mysterious Yaoi roams the narratives of the Australian bush, there exists a contingent of skeptics who cast a critical eye on the claims and stories surrounding this elusive creature. Skeptics argue that while eyewitness accounts and anecdotal evidence abound, the scientific community remains unconvinced, citing a lack of concrete, verifiable proof to substantiate the existence of the Yaoi. across things that people can't immediately explain, but I don't think I've ever come across anything that's unexplainable. Sometimes you just have to say, I don't know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's something weird. Well, the Yowie is a very interesting character or myth. I know it comes from ancient Aboriginal cultures originally, uh, but sightings of the Yowie actually decreased for a long time, and it wasn't until the 70s 
where sightings picked up again and I think really it became another cultural phenomenon, you know, it became one of those stories that Australians like to hear about. I think the more culturally prevalent something is, the more likely people are to attribute that idea to something that they can't explain. If you're primed to want to see a Yowie and you see something in the bushes that you can't explain, your brain might be much more likely to morph it into something that to you looks like a Yowie than say to me as a skeptic would. I think most people just like the idea of being able to find one and being the first, you know, the first to have the evidence that everyone's so desperate to find. I, I, I think that's what makes it such a good story in a way because it's, it's undiscovered still. But unfortunately, without any evidence, it seems unlikely to me that that the Yowie's out there. Um, the, the idea of a Yowie existing in nature is, it, it's quite a remote possibility. Really, because of genetics and inbreeding, if you have a population less than around 50 to 100, it's almost impossible, especially for a creature as big as a Yowie's purported to be, to be able to continue to breed and sustain a population. And I think given the numbers it would take over such a large area as Australia, we would definitely have found solid evidence by now if the Yowie did exist. Funny, with all the cameras in the country, nobody's produced a good photograph. I'm not saying that people didn't see things, but in the half light or in the bush or that, and once one person suggests it, the rest begin to think that they maybe even believe that they've seen it. Um, so you have to take these things with a, a big grain of salt. There's a psychological effect called pareidolia, and pareidolia is the process by which the brain essentially takes things which are random and assigns meaning to them. And the human brain's very good at morphing things you can't quite distinguish into very human-looking creatures. And it seems to me it's much more likely to be a possum based on the behavior of the creature than a yowie, for instance. You know, a, a possum is a branch dweller. And it could look like the head of a bigger creature when in fact it's just a smaller creature at a height which seems like it's the correct place for something else. If you saw that out of the corner of your eye, the rustle of the bushes, you might easily mistake that for a very human-like creature. It's not as if you've only had one report from one person. I get other photographs and reports from other people. I've had drawings that people have done for me of what they've seen and it's always the same animal. An anecdote is interesting, and it's certainly a basis for more study, but an anecdote isn't evidence. Mostly people get the shock of their life, and it, it makes a major impact on them, because suddenly they've encountered something that they never imagined existed. But a story is just a story until it's confirmed by something that can't be morphed and shaped and changed over successive iterations of remembering something. Well, I'm afraid uh, it's rather unlikely. It's unlikely on uh, geological grounds. Um, for example, there's been uh, a very large major sea gap between Australia and Southeast Asia, which is the nearest part of the rest of the world, which appears to have been there, well, we don't know for how long, but uh, of recent animals, it appears that only uh, Homo sapiens has got across, bringing with him the uh, things like the dingo, his presumably semi-domesticated dog at that time. Dr. Colin Groves is lecturer in prehistory and anthropology at the Australian National University. Yowie hit the headlines again last month when the Queen Bean Age published the claims of a Blue Mountains naturalist, Rex Gilroy, supported by photographs and illustrations said to prove its existence. It was too good an opportunity for the Queen Bean Festival Committee, headed by public servant Jim Belshaw, to pass up. It's a truly wonderful thing because we may have an unknown animal. You know, and they're not nuts, these people. They're, they're seeing something. And it's not just a shadow in the bush. I mean, it could be an Australian man, Homo australiensis. You can go so far with belief and faith and trust, I guess, but uh, a bit of physical evidence, a handful of hair would be good. Everyone's fascinated by the past. We all wish we could have a time machine. If the Yowie was out there, it would almost be as good as having one. It, you know, it would tell us something about where we've come from and also possibly where we're going. Until we actually get one in the flesh, I don't think anyone's going to know. Even though this Australia is almost the size of the United States, 45% of our country has never been discovered. It's never been explored, 45%. 
So that means there's a lot of land left where these things could easily live in seclusion. But what we're founding through witness reports and through the work of other researchers is that these things are coming closer to the city and more and more people are finally being brave enough to, to stick their hand up and say, yes, we've had an experience or we've had an encounter with, with something that fits that profile. The Yawi, whether viewed through the lens of indigenous wisdom, the scientific rigor of researchers, the skepticism of critics, or the lens of media fascination, embodies more than a cryptid. It is a symbol of the symbiotic relationship between the people and the land, a creature that transcends the boundaries of the known and the unknown. From the thermal video captured in the darkness to the ancient tales passed down through generations, the Yawi continues to elude definitive explanation. In its mystery, the Yawi invites us to ponder the depths of our understanding, to navigate the blurred lines between fact and folklore. Whether it be the devoted researchers who brave the wilderness, the skeptics challenging conventional narratives, or the indigenous custodians of the land, each perspective contributes to a richer, more nuanced understanding of this elusive enigma. The Yawi stands as a sentinel in the shadows, a guardian spirit that beckons us to explore the untamed reaches of our collective imagination. As we leave the mysteries of the Australian bush behind, we carry with us the echoes of stories, the footprints of a cryptid, and the shared quest to unravel the enigma that lingers within the heart of the Yawi.